At Whirlpool Corporation, we're in constant pursuit of improving life at home. And for generations, the kitchen has been the heart of the home, where family and friends gather to have meaningful conversation. Today, Whirlpool employees discuss the importance of collective impact on our communities where we live and work. This is Table Talk. So what effect does uh, the spirit of volunteerism and social responsibility have on a company like Whirlpool and its employees? Employees want to be engaged in the communities that they are, uh, that they live in. Employees want to also give back and they want to be with a company that they feel cares about uh, the community, the people, the environment around them. And I think it goes way beyond just writing a check. I mean, you see a lot of employees volunteering their own time, and that's really powerful. We have nine uh, U.S. plants that uh, employ about 15,000 people. And if I think about Clyde, Ohio, which is our largest facility uh, in the U.S., the population of that plant is half the size of the population of Clyde. Wow. So, you know, many of these plants are the largest employers in the towns where we operate, and so there's a, there's a big responsibility. Uh, there's a lot of pride that our employees have about the community, and so uh, it's a way to give back. It's a way to participate uh, in some small way. And I think doing it together is the key, oh. right? I mean, because if it's any one of us, it, we're not going to make the progress. Right? But right. together, we can do this. And, that, and that's why I like the collective impact model and right. some of those kinds of things. Like, we all have our talents. We all have our passions. Right. How can we come together and right. create something amazing? Right. Right. Honestly, Whirlpool has probably one of the best environments I've ever seen. It's not forced. It's natural. Um, you see leaders uh, walking the talk. Uh, you see young professionals coming in and getting excited about it. It's a special place, and the environment that, again, has been created from our founders uh, all the way through to our current leadership team uh, have really kind of set a legacy and kind of set things in motion that hopefully will carry on for years. I would love to just hear a little bit more about uh, your, your volunteering in the community and why you selected that specific organization. My focus is on young kids. I, I think that uh, personally, if you can help touch a young kid, you know, with just as, as they're beginning to grow and help them blossom into their full potential, then, then if you will, you have them for life. And so being part of the Boys and Girls Club has really helped um, us, me, to fulfill that. And I probably get more fulfillment than any of these kids. I'm like a little kid when I'm with them <laughs> because because you watch them blossom. You watch the things that they that they can do. You watch how they act. We're teaching them some some basic life skills, but we know that these are things that will help them for years to come. Harbor and Habitat for Humanity probably is the you know the one most near and dear to my heart, um, just because I just think like. Just their whole mission. I, I mean, I just I love the fact that they exist to make sure that you know people have a safe, affordable home. And when you think about all of the work that the other agencies do locally, if you aren't able to go to a safe home, you know that it's kind of pointless. You know, on top of that. So I guess that is really gratifying. I mean, I've been on a roof. I've been in the boardroom. Um, I gotta say, I really kind of like the roof. How are you with the hammer? <laughs> But that's probably my favorite one. I just get the most personal fulfillment out of that one. Thank you for joining Table Talk. Join us next time when we discuss the future of design.